Boogaloo boys have the stated goal of inciting a race war and they want to accelerate, you know, a civil war in this country. That is the, the bottom line of kind of what they believe and what their stated goals are. Now, every group is its own thing, right? It, it has individuals in each group. And individuals can have differences of, of opinion and, and different strategies. We all know that for anyone who's been involved in organizing, uh, for anyone who's been involved in these groups. So that is something to keep in mind. However, the recent movement by some on the left to kind of embrace Boogaloo Boys because purportedly, um, in some cases, they support you know, Black Lives Matter, or they support um, Medicare for all. At least that's what some of them say. Do I believe that? Not for a second. No, Boogaloo Boys do not care about Black lives. Boogaloo Boys do not hope that everybody gets health care. They don't. They are not even hiding the fact that they want to infiltrate leftist spaces to achieve their disgusting goals. Um, it's really disturbing to me how easy it's been for Boogaloo Boys to infiltrate leftist spaces and to be taken seriously. They should not be taken seriously. I firmly believe that it's a problem that's that's going to increase if, if people embrace these these Boogaloo boys. Um, and the very same people who would kind of yell at, at folks like me for saying, you know, don't work with Boogaloo boys. Um, those people saying like, oh, well, we're it's the working class. We need to work together. It's class issues. It's this. It's that. Yeah, no. We don't need to work with fascists to accomplish our goals. And I've said this vocally on Twitter, for example. Um, do I at all believe, once again, that Bugaloo Boys have our, any of our best interests at heart? No, I do not. I firmly believe in, um, you know, it's become a trope now about punching Nazis versus embracing Nazis. Now, this is not to say I have people that I love who are who are Trump supporters, who are MAGA, who are right wing. I am not in any way saying that that the working class shouldn't come together against the elite. Uh, I'm not saying that at all. I'm not saying that people can't be swayed or can't be changed. What I'm saying is that it is not being a good ally um, to black people, to people of color to embrace Boogaloo Boys, who, again, want to incite a civil war and accelerate a civil war. And that it is so easy for them, for Boogaloo Boys to say, oh, we totally, yeah, sure, totally, we totally support uh, Medicare for all, sure. We love Black Lives Matter, yep. No, they don't, they're lying. And if they do not, if they actually do support Medicare for all, if they do support Black lives, then they can simply not be a boogaloo boy. They can simply not join a racist, fascist group, right? Not hard to not be a boogaloo boy. I see some in the comments saying interviewing is not the same as embracing. So I am specifically, I've interviewed Proud Boys. You guys know I went in cover, undercover and interviewed Proud Boys. I would absolutely interview boogaloo boys. Um, I would not post or say or report the things that are kind of being done in the left spaces where people are saying, you know, they're my friends and they believe in us and, and people are organizing with them and, and those with large platforms are encouraging others to organize with them. No, we don't embrace fascists. We, we don't. They cannot, they can choose to not be a boogaloo boy. No one is making them be a boogaloo boy. I don't want to rant about this forever, but let me show you just one case, just one case of what happens when 
Boogaloo Boys and the like are allowed to infiltrate leftist spaces. Uh, Colin, if you can pop up that article. So Texas Boogaloo Boy admits in court he traveled to Minneapolis after George Floyd died, fired 13 shots in police precinct building to sow chaos. That is exactly what these people want to do, and they're not even silent about it. They're not silent about it. It is not hard at all to find examples of Boogaloo boys literally wanting to trick leftists and infiltrate leftist spaces to sow chaos, because that's exactly what they want. That is their stated goal. Uh, it's, it's, it's that simple. So this came out on October 11th. And again, this is just one case of several. A Texas man pleaded guilty on September 30th to a federal riot charge and admitted he traveled to Minneapolis after George Floyd died to sow mayhem. Ivan Harrison Hunter, 24, admitted he traveled from the San Antonio area to Minneapolis after Floyd's death and fired 13 shots from an AK-47 style semi-automatic rifle into the Minneapolis Police Department's third precinct building on May 8, 2020. Protesters gathered outside of the building in the days after Floyd's May 25th death. On the night of May 28th, protesters threw rocks at the windows of the precinct and it was set ablaze. Footage taken that night shows Hunter in a skull mask give someone a high five after firing the shots and yell, justice for Floyd. Looters were thought to be inside the building at the time. No one was injured by gunfire, according to a release from the Department of Justice. Ivan is a self-proclaimed member of the Boogaloo Boys, a far-right anti-government extremist group. Members of the movement appeared at Black Lives Matter protests across the country in 2020, carrying weapons and wearing Hawaiian shirts and tactical gear. Boogalooers believe a second civil war known as the Boogaloo is imminent and will result in the overthrow of what they believe to be a corrupt political system. The Boogaloo boys are known to exploit tensions and sow chaos in pursuit of further violence. The term Boogaloo has in some cases been used as an outright call for a race war, according to the Southern Poverty Law Center. Federal agents identified Hunter as the shooter after spotting him wearing the same skull mask in a Facebook photo. After the protests, Hunter bragged on social media about his actions, saying he'd helped the community burn down that police station in Minneapolis. Hunter was the third Boogaloo boy to be charged in connection with the Minneapolis protests. He communicated with other members of the group via Facebook after Floyd's death, writing that he was going to Minneapolis and was 72 hours out after a Minnesota-based member posted that he needed a head count. An informant also told the Federal Bureau of Investigation that Hunter had admitted to shooting at the building and helping to set it on fire. He was charged with participating in a riot in October 2020 and faces a maximum of five years in prison. So, guys, I don't want anyone coming in my Twitter when I share stuff like this and saying, oh, but I saw one at uh, a Black Lives Matter protest. Yeah, I'm sure you did because they want to sow chaos and get leftists on their side. The right wing, this is not new. This is not a new thing where, you know, I'm sure that if you are very online, like many of us are, that you've heard people talking about the Red Brown Alliance. This is not at all the first time that this has happened in history, where leftists um, embrace and welcome those on the far right to kind of work against the elite. But as soon as it no longer suits their purposes, these kinds of people, these fascists, these horrible racists, they turn on the leftists because their goal is this chaos and division. 